Hello everyone and welcome back. We have studied about for each loop and the map method. So we already know how it works. We have here our source code that we have uh, done last time in the last video. So our challenge was instead of displaying it right over here on the console, we're going to, to display that on the page. Uh, perhaps maybe using a table, right? Just like what we did with for loop. So let's head over here. In fact, what I'm going to do, let's just create a new copy of this project. Let me right click here and reveal in File Explorer. It will, hold on. I think I have it open over here. So the name of this folder is 4H underscore map method, which is this one. I'll just go ahead and control C, control V to create another copy. And I'll just uh, going to name this 4H application. Okay, so and we are going to open that in VS Code. So that's going to be open folder, Br browse for that uh, folder that we have created, which is this one, and then select folder. So in our uh, HTML, we'll just update some information here for each loop application. Uh, what I'm, I'm going to copy this as well and paste that over here for the title uh, let me right click that and open with live server okay i'm going to close the other one okay so we are now looking at this we're going to be deleting that button as well okay now we're going to activate this code for the table so we already have some structure here uh, my t body and i think we have a style uh, a little bit of CSS on this one. Okay, we're good. So let's head over to our script.js and what we're going to do uh, is delete some code, maybe this one, so we can focus on our topic, right? This one as well. And I believe this, uh, okay, we will just edit this variable my btn because what we're going to do is to uh, copy this ID from our T body because we're going to be creating uh, what we're going to do is something like this. So TR and then TD, the number for the fruit, the first number is one. And then the second TD or table data is going to be something like Apple. Uh, if we're going to, let me put this at the side. As you can see, uh, we have that on our page. So what we wanted to happen, let me just give, uh, let's just paste some data here for, uh, for preview purposes. Okay, hold on. All right, let me just edit this one. This is fruit number two, fruit number three. And then let me just fix some indentation. This one is going to be, for example, banana. And this one is great. So this is what we're going to create but instead of manually typing it here on the uh, in our HTML document, we're going to be doing that here in JavaScript so that the data is going to be dynamic. It will depend on how many items uh, here uh, in our array, right? So we already have characters here. This is going to be like a name of game characters. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do now is we are going to delete this. It was only for preview. So we already have an ID for the T body. Let's copy this ID and paste that over here. Let me just drag this all the way to the left so we can have space uh, to work on. And that ID, we have to use pound sign, right? In order to reference this HTML element T body. If you don't want to use an ID, for example, if you wanted to delete that and you wanted to target the T body, instead of query selector, let me just comment this out. Instead of query selector, you can use get element by tag name right over here. And of course, instead of using a pound sign, uh, you need the actual name of the element itself. All right, so, oops, hold on. Let me just uh, switch first my camera over here. Okay, but I think you were able to see that, right? Okay, still here at the top. 
All right, so this is how you reference an actual name of an HTML element, an actual tag name using the get elements by tag name method in JavaScript. All right, so just so you know, let me delete that one because we're going to be using the other method that I personally prefer. You don't have to, by the way. Uh, that's why I, uh, I, I show you the, the other uh, method. So right now, we already have a variable that is referenced to this T body. What we can do now is using the for each loop. Let me just delete this one so we can start from scratch. So for each, tab on the keyboard to autocomplete. So these are the characters. This is the, uh, I mean, the, the, the variable that holds the collection of data or our array. We can copy that and replace this array with that one. And instead of element over here, uh, we can type a uh, character or just car, right? Now over here, uh, inside the for loop, we can type the code that we wanted to do while the for each loop is iterating this array. So what we wanted to happen is to create a TR, right? So we are creating a variable TR and this one is going to be document that create element. We already have studied this one. And of course, what type of element that is going to be TR. So right here is just a variable, right? It could be X, X, Y, Z, or A, B, C. I'm just using TR so that it is less confusing, right? So, but what we're trying to create here is a TR element, uh, just like uh, using this in HTML or typing this manually on HTML, but we are doing it here in JavaScript instead. So after creating that element, we can now use inner HTML in order to create, let me just type it here. Uh, we wanted to create this type of thing as well, the TD, right? So over here, for example, warrior, like that. We wanted to create this uh, row of information. Let me zoom in just a little bit. Okay, so what we can do now, let, hold on, sorry about that, I didn't, uh, uh, I accidentally pressed Control S while I was on the browser. What we can do now is we can just go ahead and copy this. This is the HTML uh, HTML code that we need in order to uh, append it over here. All right, let me go ahead and type TR. So this is the variable TR and then inner HTML equal sign, right? I hope you still rem remember this one. And then back tick, right? Now I can press control V on the keyboard. So we just pasted here the HTML element from our, uh, from here, from this place, right? So we can delete this now. And then from here, we can actually, if you want, you can arrange this into something like this. Okay. Something like that. Then make sure to have a semicolon here at the end. Just to be sure, although semicolon is not really required in JavaScript anymore. But uh, for backtick, just to make sure that it is easy to read, uh, use a semicolon. Now, uh, since we are using backtick, we can now use the syntax dollar sign and then curly brackets, right? Over here as well, right? Now, over here, the first TD, we know that it is the one that will be uh, printed or displayed here. And the other TD is for the uh, name of the character uh, itself, the items over here in our array. So uh, since we're going to be uh, generating numbers, right, depending on the length of the array, we can initialize here a variable called I, or it could be A. It doesn't really matter. We are going to start initializ initi initializing the value from one, right? Now we can go ahead and type I here. So that one will be, this uh, data will be displayed on our page. And the second one that we wanted to display is the car right over here, okay? This means uh, this items over here in our array. So we can copy that and paste over here. And uh, we are not yet iterating the I, okay? While the for each loop is happening, we want to keep adding one or we want to keep 
iterating, incrementing the i variable. And we can do it right over here, i plus plus, right? The reason that we put it right here at the last part of this uh, uh, series of code is because the first value is one. If we are going to place this one over here, Okay, so the current value is one, then it will be uh, it will be added or it will increment by one over here before it is being displayed. So therefore, the one that will come up over here on our page is instead of one, it will be two. In fact, if I'm going to save this right now, uh, right now it's still not appearing because we still have to append that to the T body. Let me copy that, paste that over here and then append child, right? Append child. And what is it that we're going to append? Of course, is the TR variable. See my colon, save our work. And now we have all the list of items from our characters array, from warrior to the wizard, which is the last one. Now, as you can see the numbering, it's, it starts with two. It is because the initial value here is one. Uh, we can fix that by initializing that to zero and we will be able to achieve, to achieve the, the desired result. But if in case you have decided to initialize that to one, make sure that your increment, uh, uh, this one right here, when you increment the value of this variable, you have to place that over here uh, after displaying it. And we still have the same result. And always remember that in programming, no matter what language you're using, there are always multiple ways to solve the same problem. And I hope that this has been informative for you. See you in the next one.